Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you guys two different tools to color in your vote poster. The first tool that we're going to use is the eyedropper tool. And then the second tool that we're going to use right over here, the live paint bucket tool. With both of these tools today, you'll be able to, to fill in your, your vote poster. So let's start. The first thing I want to do is think about color. And I know we've already talked about it, but you want to select colors that, that, that reflect what it is that you're trying to make people do, which for this, you're trying to encourage people to, to vote. So I'm going to go into Google Chrome right down here, and I'm looking up color palette. For this poster specifically, I'm going to look up color palettes that are red, white, and blue. So when I find the color palette that I want, which for me, I want this one right here, I'm going to hold on Control and click on the one that I want. I could copy the image so that I could just paste it into Illustrator, or you could save the image on your desktop and you could keep it for other projects as well. I'm just going to click on Copy Image. So again, I held Control and I click on the palette that I want and I'm going to copy the image. And I'm going to go back to Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to click on the top where it says Edit, Paste. Now I have my color palette. I'm actually going to move it off to the side with the selection tool. And I'm going to use this for the next few steps. I'm going to select my sketch. I'm going to click right here on my layers. If you can't see all your layers, just click on that little arrow. You see it right there. That little arrow lets you see all the separate layers. Go all the way to the bottom and click on the little eye to hide it. And I'm actually going to start off with my text. Now, in this one, my text is red, but I could actually change that. I could select the text with the selection tool, which is the black arrow right there. And then I'm going to go to the first tool that I'm going to show you, which is the eyedropper tool. This does exactly what it, what it tends to do with a regular eyedropper. It samples a section. For this, it's going to sample whatever color I click on, and it's going to change it for what I have selected. So I have voting selected, it changes it to blue. Change it to white, change it to red, even if I click here on gray, or even if I click on my photo, skin color, right? White, gray, red, blue. I'm gonna leave it on blue. I'm gonna also select rights, eyedropper, click on the blue, select four, eyedropper, click on the blue. All right, the next thing I wanna do, I wanna lock my actual words because my next tool does not play well with text. It actually stops it from happening. So I have four selected. I'm gonna to go to Object, Lock, Selection, which by the way, I use Command-2. Instead of going all the way up here, I use Command-2 just to lock it. So I select this, Command-2, select this, Command-2, select Voting, Command-2. And now I could focus on this part of the illustration, which is the stars and the fist. So I'm gonna, I'm going to click and drag my illustration, not the text or anything else outside of it. Remember I said the next tool, which is the live paint bucket tool, does not play well with text or with images. So I hid my sketch. I selected only my illustration. And now I'm going to go to the live paint bucket tool, which is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the sixth one from the bottom left corner. Now. I could just click in here and it could fill these in, but in reality, I want to have this palette here. This is what makes it more customizable. So instead of me having to, to click here and change the color, I have my live paint bucket tool, which I'm going to zoom into right now. And I want to eye drop in here, but I don't want to go switch my tool. So if you hit option in the same tool, it lets you eye drop. So I drop into the blue, I'm going to zoom out, and then I can color this in and this in. Same thing with the red. I'm going to eye drop into the red, click, and click. If I wanted the stars to be red, I could go click, 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 and click. Now, for this right here, I actually want to use this skin tone. So I'm going to hold Option, click. I'm just going to click. I'm not holding Option. Again, I have my color already in there. I'm going to click, click, and notice, because the stars are right behind it, it thinks, oh, just in case, do you want to make that a separate color? Like, no, this is all part of the same hand. And this right here, this right here, this right here. 
Now there's something that I failed to mention at the beginning, but it's very important to say, and that is that each one of these sections has to be closed off. I think about them as little pools. If there was a gap in between any of these, the color would just leak out. So for example, if I wanted this to be a separate color, I would have clicked and clicked right here and closed it. But I wanted all that to be the same color. And I can click outside of this, and you can see my colors are in there. Now, the next thing I want to do is create a background color. So I'm going to create a rectangle. There are other ways to do it, but this is the easiest way and the most customizable way. So the fifth tool on the left column, the rectangle tool, I'm going to click and drag all the way down to the bottom. And now I can change the color right here. Double click on the fill color. Let's say I want it to be this crazy purple. Right? The only problem is that it's all the way in front. I'm going to go to Object, Arrange, Send to the back. And again, you can still change the color. If you don't like it, you can change the color at any point of any of these. And that's how to use color in Adobe Illustrator.